So good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, my name is Igor. I came here from Budapest, uh, and I study software engineering there. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Igor underscore Renz J. All right, I'm here to talk to you about uh, Vue.js. Why is it so cool, and uh, why sh you should maybe give it a try. Um, I'm also here to talk a little bit about Neoscript. Um, I assume most of you guys know Neoscript, so I'm just going to uh, give a little brief explanation and introduction to Neoscript for those who might not be familiar with it. So what is Neoscript? Um, Neoscript is an open source framework for building truly native mobile applications using JavaScript. And what's cool, there is no DOM in Neoscript and there are no web views, so it's not like Cordoba or any similar approaches to mobile applications. So yeah, that's uh, really cool. We just have pure, awesome native views. Yes, please. So what is Vue.js? Um, Vue.js is a JavaScript uh, model view framework for building uh, mostly web applications. But it turns out it's quite good for Neoscript as well, but I'm going to go into details in a couple more uh, slides later. So uh, Vue.js is a bit like Angular 1, uh, but only the good things. So if you used Angular 1, uh, you might notice some similarities uh, in the templates. Uh, but Vue.js is very simple. I think you can, most of you guys can learn it in about uh, a week, I think so. Um, as I said, Vue.js is really simple. There are two uh, main units in Vue.js. Well, one of them is a component. Uh, you pretty much use components for everything in Vue.js. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, directives, which are usually used for uh, uh, low-level DOM access. So here is an example of a uh, simple view component. Uh, you just call the view.component uh, method. We give it a name and uh, an object with options for the component. In this case, I'm just giving it a simple template and then you can use it in your uh, HTML. This, uh, I'll, I'll show the Neoscript side in a little bit. So this is still the uh, web version. But um, it's a little different to real custom elements. Uh, uh, I think there is a plugin to use real custom elements, but for this, uh, it's actually uh, Vue.js at runtime just replaces the element with your component's uh, template. On the other hand, we have a Vue uh, directive. You just, uh, it's, it's really similar to uh, components. You, you just give it a name and uh, there are a couple hooks you can use. Uh, in this case, we are using the inserted hook, which uh, focuses the element when it's inserted into the DOM. And uh, you can see how it's used down there. Yeah. Uh, Vue.js is also uh, quite powerful. Uh, it is really simple when you want, to, want it to be simple. So. Um, if you want to build a little demo, you can just uh, put in a script tag with uh, the Vue.js library and then another script tag for your application and you're up and running. No build steps, no nothing. But uh, you can also build uh, quite, uh, quite large applications with it. Um, uh, there is a first party ecosystem. There is a router uh, which allows uh, client side routing in uh, uh, Vue.js. And there is Vuex, which is a state management system. Uh, this is also quite nice. Uh, it's, it's a little bit like Redux. Uh, so the next question might be, how does Vue come into play with Neoscript? Uh, since Vue 1.x, that was uh, depending on the HTML DOM. So that's not useful for us in Neoscript. But since 2.x, uh, it was a complete rewrite. Uh, using virtual DOM, which allows us to um, use it with Neoscript. So virtual DOM is awesome. And this brings me to my next point, uh, Neoscript View. A Neoscript View is an uh, integration I started working uh, this year in April. Uh, it's basically um, a custom renderer for Vue, which uh, renders uh, Neoscript components, so it sits between uh, Vue and Neoscript. Uh, the main difference between the web version of Vue and the Neoscript view is the templating. 
because we are no longer on uh, like in a web environment, we need to use the Nascript specific elements. And another tiny difference is the way you start your uh, view application. On the web, you would usually um, call a mount function and mount it to an element. But in Nascript view, you just call, uh, you, since there are no elements to mount your application to, you just uh, start the uh, application. So if you ever used view, this might look familiar. Uh, it is pretty much the same as you would do it on the web, except the require statement and the app.start statement. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and build a little application. I didn't want to do live coding, so I have slides about it. So um, let's start. Uh, you, you create a new uh, empty project using uh, the TNS template blank, uh, which should give you a directory structure like this on the right. So we do not need some of those files. So we're going to remove the bundle config.js and the home folder and clear out the app.js. And then we can get started. So we are going to install Nascript view. You can use uh, the TNS uh, CLI to install the Nascript view plugin, or you can use NPM or Yarn, whichever you prefer. All right, uh, let the fun begin. We're going to require Nascript view, uh, create a new instance, give it a template, and start our application. And we should have, oh, we should run the application first, yeah. And we should have something like that. Um, very exciting, right? <coughs> All right, so uh, we are now going to add an action bar. Uh, so um, this is pretty much should be uh, familiar to you. So we just uh, create an action bar, give it a title, and give it uh, add a stack layout with some text. And you can see the result on the right. So this is all basic stuff, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, Let's do some tabs. Uh, we have a tab view component. And then you have the tab view items. You give the tabs a title, uh, add some labels, and it all works quite nicely. But uh, let's use some Vue.js stuff here. Uh, we want to make these tabs dynamic. So in the data uh, property of view, we are going to define some tabs uh, and then loop through them with v4 which is uh, just a simple loop in Vue.js, and bind the tab's title to the title property. That's the syntax, uh, the column title syntax. And then we are going to bind the contents <coughs> as well to the label's text. Um, let's, let's move on and add a, a little header to our tabs. So. Um, for this, I'm using a stack layout, give it, giving it a height, a background color, um, and the label with the title. In the next slide, we are going to add some list views. So list views are a little more tricky, but quite easy to, to do. So we have list views, we give the items, and then we need to specify the template for all the items. So this is where we have a stack layout, some labels, and some CSS classes that's in another file. And um, after doing some cleanup, uh, yeah, I've added the BG color properties and stuff. We should uh, have something like that on the right. And then some computed properties to filter down our uh, co uh, contacts. So uh, this is a concept in view that you can use uh, functions which uh, return data, and this is all really cool, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, but for our app, little, uh, I want to add a little modal. So we want to add an item tab, event handler. So this is the syntax you would use in view. It's an add symbol. And then uh, call the show modal function and give it a template, which I'm going to show on the next slide. It's a simple little template, so just a stack layout, some, some um, labels, and all that good stuff. I showed this before, so I'm not going to go into details. 
And this is what we have so far. Um, not very much code, so I think this is very enjoyable to write. So this is another model we're going to work on. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the code because you probably uh, can see it. And <coughs> it's just uh, simple stack layouts and labels and text fields. Um, so this, I know this is much code. I just can like shrink it down because then it would be an even bigger mess. <laughs> but uh, if you view this is nothing uh, Nothing scary, it's just uh, usual properties of view. So uh, that model we can use, again, using a, an event for when tapping on an action item in our action bar. And then there is some logic for saving the contacts and all that good stuff. So with that addition, we have now uh, an edit and an add contact model, um, which allows us to edit and add contacts. But it's actually quite tedious to write your templates as string literals. So most uh, IDs will not uh, offer out a completion, and it's just tedious. So I'm going to uh, introduce to you .view files, which are basically files that uh, wrap your uh, logic and your templates and your styling in a single file. Um, this might sound weird to some people because um, most people like to uh, separate their uh, templates and scripts and, in, and styling into the separate files. But once you use them, it's actually quite nice and everyone should give it a try one day. So that's uh, possible in NativeScript as well using a template. We have um, the NativeScript view rollup template. Uh, we tried to do it with Webpack. It kind of works, but it was uh, a little tricky to get it right. So we are using rollup for this. And then uh, finally, I'd like to show a little demo of NativeScript Sidekick. Um, but first, I think um, I'll give a brief explanation. So NativeScript, uh, so NativeScript Sidekick is an extension to the NativeScript CLI, uh, which allows you to manage your uh, plugins, debug your apps using Chrome DevTools. Uh, you can build your apps locally and in the cloud. And I'd like to show you now. Um, actually, I need some time because I had to restart my computer, but NativeScript Sidekick is very cool. Just give it a moment. So you can see your applications in the uh, main screen. And uh, when you go into the app, you can change your settings like app name and description, and iOS-specific settings, and manage your assets, Android-specific settings, plugins. So uh, this is the, the demo I showed uh, on the slides. And we should be able to do like a cloud build. But that takes time, so I will do a build and then show a screenshot what you should get when it's done. So um, in the, when you do a cloud build, you get a QR code you can uh, scan with your phone and, and install the APK. This is for Android, uh, obviously. And uh, you can test your applications. And uh, that's mostly what I had for you guys today. Um, so if you want, if you're interested in NativeScript U, um, it's on GitHub. Um, we also launched a new website, NativeScriptView.org, which is uh, still a working progress, but it's uh, mostly documentation and and some guides how to get started with it. Uh, we have more than 700 stars now. So I, I'm quite happy with that because uh, the project was started um, this April. Um, if you decide to give Nascript View a try, uh, hop on in the View channel on the Nascript Slack community. And we are more than happy to help you. Thank you. <laughs>